Him who did Saddam Hussein think he was a reincarnation of? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to trace all this stuff back to... Uh, yeah, this is all rather mythical and iconic. It is, yeah. Um, but this artificial system that, we're, that you're outlining and that we're dealing with, um, if it doesn't exist, whether it's the Matrix or not, humans and society have to interact on some level. What would you suggest to replace it with? What system of organisation and interaction between entities, be it real entities or virtual ones, mm. that should should supplant this system? If it, if it's if it's so bad that it needs to be replaced with something, yeah. what is the replacement? What would be a replacement? You know why why I see all of this stuff happening is because the reason that entities are created mostly is to gain an advantage in business. So IP, like intellectual property, McDonald's, Coke, branding, all of that IP stuff, right, is the creation of artificial entities to create uh, an unfair advantage in the monetary corporate world. And so what this system does is it's the regulation of artificial entities. And so that that world is real. It, it, it is real in a sense that you know it, it has a life of its own. But for us to interact with it means that you know we we have to have some kind of transmitting utility. And, but to replace it, you know, I mean, in the old days there was trade, and, and a lot of people have tried to bring in trade, like barter, barter card, and all those sorts of things. They try to bring in a system where there's a fair exchange. You know, I'll give you my sheep for a, you know a bushel of wheat or that, you know, they used to have systems of, um, of fair exchange, you know. And the only time that taxes and things came in is when you had a, a liege lord, you know, who owned the land, and he would, he would you know, get you to do you know, labour in his land, and you would pay taxes for the upkeep of things. And it was apportioned, but tax is no longer apportioned. It's become this um, artificial thing, you know, so... Yeah, if we, if we were to replace it, we'd have to go back. Does it need to be replaced as well? Is another question. Like in, in my particular case, mm -hmm. my whole world and my identity is in my hand right now. Mm. I'm not actually disappointed or disapproving of that. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually. Today was the first day I actually went to a bank and got cash dollars. Yeah. I wouldn't say this year, but certainly very, very many, many months. Yeah. I run my life through my credit card, my financial life, yeah. and I'm perfectly happy with that because mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with the, you know, the cash stuff sure. or whatever. Sure. Well, most, and most the fact are. that if I do it this way, the one benefit of it is that every transaction I make is automatically recorded. Yeah. I don't have to account for anything personally. I don't have to use cash. I don't have to deal with the fact that I do or do not have actually cash on me or whatever, as long as my bank account's got mm -hmm. a certain overhead in it. And mainly, all of those transactions are recorded. So when it comes time to actually deal with tax and stuff like that, the paper trail's already there. Yeah. I don't have a great sweat about anything. I don't have a great problem with anything. I can appreciate everything that you're saying. Yeah. Uh, but personally, I actually don't really have a great problem with the current system. Mm -hmm. To the system, and, and it's if, very easy. If anything, I would somewhat object to actually spending the extra amount of overhead that I would have to invest in mm -hmm. to fight against it, mm -hmm. as you would be. I don't want to spend three months actually changing my identity yeah. because the ones that I've got, I'm actually perfectly happy with. Sure, well, it does cause... So in other words, that's what I'm saying. What if you look at it would on be a, a reasonable thing to replace you don't know, you can keep situation. your perfect system that you're using and that works for you. Yeah. You look on a bigger level with multi corporations that are, are lending out your money at ninety percent and the corporation is getting bigger and stronger and more control and we're staying stuck and happy where we are using our credit cards. We're stuck in a position down here mm -hmm. and this system could be replaced and be more fair with them not be out the laws sort of benefit them and they're getting richer and bigger and the kind of thing. Mm. And taxing your money, like the government actually taking a tax away from you and, and saying that it's using, this is the funny thing, 
and people kind of get up on their high horses sometimes and say, well, you know, the government uses my tax and, um, you know, it builds roads and all that sort of stuff. That's bullshit. We build the roads. The people build the roads, right? They, they don't use the, the tax money. Or the only thing that our tax does is it goes toward paying off the debt to the International Monetary Fund. Mm. Okay? And everything else is created by the governments as, as fictitious cash, right? But we, when you hear people say, well, you know, oh, you're, you know, we, my tax money is paying for you doll bludgers, that's not true. Uh, it's, not, it's not at all. That's, that's far from the truth. So, but the government is taking your hard labor, paying you pittance for it, you know, whatever job that you know, we're all doing. I mean, if you're working for 50 bucks an hour, I mean, if you think about it, that 50, that $50 or those 50 credits that you get, if you got 50 bucks an hour, and you know, not many people get 50 bucks an hour, okay? You think about that, an hour of your time on this planet, of your life, of your life, blood and sweat, and then the government comes along and takes out 30% or whatever it takes out of that, right? And you get given nothing, you, you don't get paid in anything, right? So you get uh, you get nothing of value for it. And even if you bought something of value for it, what would you buy it with? You'd buy it with the private credit of the International Monetary Fund. You'd be buying it with these pieces not of paper, with your cash, yeah. not with yours, because there is no money. All of that, all those dollars that you think are yours that might be sitting in your wallets, don't belong to you. They're on loan from the International Monetary Fund, and you pay tax because you're using them, right? And at the end of the day, if they said they're not worth anything, you can forget it. Now, I spoke to the bank manager of St. George Bank a couple months back. And that and is the system that should be changed. Yeah. And, and I said to him, is there any lawful money in circulation? If I explain anything of value. And he said, well, of course there is. You know. And I said, well, what do you own of value? And so, you know, he goes, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I said, yeah, but none of those things have any intrinsic value. They don't retain that value. I said, what do you have that, that retains its value? He said, well, I've, I've got a gold ring on. Right? And I said, okay, what did you use to buy the gold ring with? And he was silent, because he suddenly realized that everything that we own is bought with the private credit of the International Monetary Fund. Right? And that gold ring is absolutely useless once he gets hungry. Yeah. Can't now, even... when you buy gold, if you go along to like a, a place that sells gold and silver, and you you want to buy some gold or sell some gold, they're going to ask you for one of these. Yeah. Now, you go along and try and uh, give them one of these and see what happens. Now, I'm going to show you this. This is my sovereign identification. Pass that one around. That is the, that is the most valuable thing that I have. It's, it's my sovereign identification. I created it myself. It's my photo. It's my real name, it's my real signature, and my real date of birth, which, by the way, everyone's date of birth is hearsay, because, I mean, were you there at the time? You might have been, but, I mean, do you know? Can you, can you actually, anyone here <laughs> prove that they were born on the day that you were told you were born? Right, so it's hearsay. Now, when you go along and buy some gold, they're going to ask you for some ID. I dropped that one on the table. I said, here you go. They wouldn't accept it. No, sorry. I said, why not? They said, we need a government ID. I said, why is that? And she said, well, we need, you know, we need proof of who you are. And I said, well, I'm giving you proof of who I am. This is who I am. I'm saying who I am. Because I tell the government who I am, and then they issue these, uh, these second-hand documents, okay, which say who they think I am based on who I've told them that I am. So... Here's my birth certificate, and here's my uh, here's who I am, and they won't accept it. They have to have your all capital mm. letter legal fiction, because they have to do business with the straw man. They can't do business with a, a natural flesh and blood being. Okay, and so that transaction is recorded. And if you buy gold, what do you buy it with? You buy it with the you know the private credit of the International Monetary Fund, which isn't yours. And so <laughs> they can just go and take back all this stuff if they want to. Mm.